Hello, my future wanderlust and my regular uh, sexy creatures. Um, it is winter. <clears throat> my uh, Caribbean and South Floridian thin blood cannot handle the uh, Korean winter, but I am adapting, staying warm. I got like 30 shirts on right now, including this turtleneck sweater. <laughs> James Baldwin once said, quote, I met a lot of people in Europe. I even encountered myself, end quote. You don't truly know yourself until you've traveled to a foreign land. You have a lot of hidden sensations and sensibilities that will remain dormant if you don't set foot outside of your glass bubble. Sure, you can live vicariously through others by watching thought-provoking films and reading good books, but nothing can prepare you, nothing can teach you about the essential nuances of different people and different cultures in different lands. Reading Rainbow, motherfucker. The different smells of garbage, the unique mannerisms and social interaction, the inevitable test of patience and tolerance, the sweet and sour taste of vulnerability, the unsafe bridge of time and space. Believe me, running outside of your comfort zone is the true essence of living. At least one of them. Uh, traveling. <laughs> the real Big Bang occurs when you realign your universe. You'll discover and rediscover the fallacies in your upbringing. And it will humble you. But it will also reaffirm some deeply held uh, values that you may have. So here are my top things that I've learned so far while traveling. Keep this in mind. Nothing is concrete. I'm still learning as I'm making this video. So uh, here it is. Here's a quick summary of what I've learned so far. It's not in order, but here's number one. Humankind. Humankind isn't as ruthless as it seems. People are generally good people. I think the goodwill of others outweigh the negativity. Now, I know the abstract of good certainly has its interpretations, but the human condition isn't in dire need of medication, okay? Prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness exist in all cultures. Now, navigating through the labyrinth of communication will either make or break you and that's just you being either a strong or weak person travel to find out locals and their ordinary aspirations now we all have stereotypes about other countries and their countrymen and country women the locals are trying to make ends meet and have other aspirations just like you do they don't only exist just to accommodate you as the businessman the foreigner the traveler or the tourist if you're not in a foreign country for the long term in in, in other words if if you didn't immigrate in a country then remember you have your own home i of course experienced this social discomfort in south korea but i do realize that the person walking past me or sitting next to me in the subway has their own story and has a much more bigger investment in their own country that they were born in now i still have a right to tell my story but with grace and respect media sensationalism exists everywhere traveling gives you a great insight into how sensationalism uh, affects positive and negative opinions and ideologies regarding all sorts of current affairs the question of authenticity yes reevaluate your notions of authenticity countries their cultures are vibrating different cadences exist different drum beats exist but so does infrastructure uh, technology and complicated history in countries where you will least expect get your research in no one will understand you unless you attempt to understand them modernization doesn't always mean westernization the socio-economical and technological development will still carry cultural differences changing socio-economical paradigms is a historical process good and bad aspects of traditions should be evaluated by their people with little input from the outside placing high value on material or superficial things will always be a controversial phase of modernization and it's not always an aspect of the western world a western trait or even a western issue it's a human issue that we all face historically beauty standards and manliness are not absolute truth Traveling makes you reflect and reevaluate your own cultural expectations of manliness and womanhood. Perception and body language. I know the different social vibes that comes with New York versus Miami, 
but it was quite difficult to compare that to Germany and South Korea. And the only way for you to find out about different social vibes is for you to travel. Translation can only take you so far. Alienation and boredom. That's actually the life altering moment of clarity. You're alone in a coffee shop in a foreign land and then suddenly a bundle of emotions hits you all at once. It puts your identity and your future goals into, in, into greater perspective. I call that moment the loud mirror moment where your reflections simply scream back at you. That leads me to number nine, which is disconnection and interconnectedness. In moments of despair and moments of isolation, that's when you realize just how much the human species are actually connected. When the waitress comes by, always at the right time, smiles and says, and you respond with a, a startling yes and then break out of your spell. Possessions own you. Material things own you. Traveling makes you realize how much you appreciate minimalism. Number 11, questioning your own society, uh, values, ideology, mores, uh, cultural taboos. Everything is questioned. Looking at America from the outside, foreign policy, uh, our history, my views have altered drastically for better and for worse. <laughs> Let's just say moral or philosophical and political questions are no longer of academic interest. Wanted versus unwanted attention. Uh, Middle-aged Korean women, they're called ajumas. They're pretty much, you know, um, they have a lot of power in, in South Korea. They grab my hair all the time without permission. I'm used to it now. Most people want to be unique. An individual is still shaped by external forces. Uh, so being a foreigner still works to my advantage. Uh, but there are um, certain circumstances that may overexpose me. <laughs> For example, certain circumstances may make you feel like a household pet. Or, you know, uh, hey mom, look, I got a black friend. <laughs> Negative and positive energy is universal. Uh, I once walked inside a casino with my other foreign friends from different western countries. And we both immediately decided that we needed to go. <laughs> Um, apparently there were uh, Chinese mafia guys in there, and um, the um, atmosphere just wasn't um, tasty. Nah, <laughs> I was being a punk that night. I was like, I don't even gamble. Why'd y'all take me in there? I want some ice cream. Who buy my ice cream sandwich? Circle of friends and the delete button. Through traveling, you make friends quickly, but you also lose them quickly. Going away parties do get a bit redundant, and the emotional aspect of it um, may not come out the way you think it will. You, you, you're, you're sad they're leaving, um, but at times you're so used to these going away parties, uh, your, your right emotions really doesn't come out. And also, from uh, in, in terms of friends from back home, you miss them because uh, the connection isn't there, so you lose touch. Uh, but fortunately, you have Facebook and Twitter and other means of uh, communication. Uh, but at the same time, the delete button has been hit several times. And that's probably the most unfortunate thing about traveling is the disconnection that will will come. Independence and spontaneity. Yes, traveling forces you to better interact with complete strangers. And yes, it does make you try to do everything because you're constantly pressed for time stability and a vulnerability yes uh those two words appear often should i get married do i want kids i miss you mom these are questions that occur because you aren't sure as to what country you really want to live in forever uh, that's the stability aspect of it and the vulnerability comes in hand or not come in hand, but appears when you finally realize that you actually don't know. Of course, if you set out a plan to go back home because you have a specific mission to accomplish, then yes, uh, the stability aspect doesn't come up as much as the vulnerability aspect of it all. Butchering the English language is a controversial topic, um, from black ebonics to redneck English. But try butchering a complete different language, like Korean. <laughs> A slight variation in certain pronunciations can mean completely different things. Uh, Shippal means 18. Shippal means the F word. 
Uh, one day, during my class, I told my students they had 18 minutes left before we uh, uh, finished the test. <clears throat> and I said this. Yorobun, shepal namaso. Ne, shepal namaso. My student was like, teacher, she gave me the X sign. No, no, shepal. That's what I said, shepal. Shepal namaso, okay? You got 18 minutes left. <laughs> Finish the last question and, and, we're, and we're out, okay? Teacher, no. What do you mean, no? Ship pal. 18. That's, whatever. Bye. <laughs> Hurry up. I told my co teacher because she was out that day, and yes, she laughed hysterically in my face. I had to calm her down because she was laughing too much. Um, yes, uh, for those of you that pick on other people's English accents, um, you should try learning a different language. It, it will definitely humble you. And that fun experience only comes from traveling. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and number 18, reverse culture shock. Through traveling, when you go back home, uh, there are certain idiosyncrasies that you may forget about. Um, my homeboys came up to me, yo, Will, what's good, man? It's been a long time. And I kept giving them half bows. <laughs> it was like, what's good, bro? You all right? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I started responding to my mother. She asked me if I was hungry in Haitian Creole. And I said, I responded in Korean. She was like, Wilkin, Ugungu. And I was like, Ne. She was like, Kisa. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> Went to Walmart. Walmart ratchetness. Ah, oh, and the overabundance of food, the selections, dear God, how many selections of cereal do we need? It was paradise, I know, but I spent two hours there. In Korea, you know, I, I can choose, okay, it's only like 10. Uh, I, I might be, you know, over-exaggerating in terms of, you know, the low selection of cereal brands in the grocery stores, but America is just ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't know, these are small things, um, but reverse culture shock. Um, uh, does carry a lot of weight when you return back to your homeland. So remember, through traveling, allow yourself to walk over the glass bridge. If the foundation cracks, there is a body of water that will break your fall. And if it doesn't crack, everybody awaits the old and the new you. One love, peace, and be free. Okay, everyone, you have 18 minutes left. Shipan Namaso.